His father, not Angel Gabriel. His father, not the Holy Spirit. His father, not Prophet Ben. His father, not the Archbishop of Canterbury. Told him, go. And just an ordinary errand. An ordinary errand. Just go give food to your brother. Knowing that in that daily routine came an appointment with destiny. Mm -hmm. But it didn't only stop there. He had to, the destiny can, uh, can present itself, but you need to know when it's time to take the initiative. So he saw that Goliath. Imagine a little guy. Imagine a little guy. Goliath. Goliath was saying something. Find me a man. Sorry, I had to dramatize this because this was joking with me when my boys were, were younger. I used to tell them this story. They used to love it. Now they think I'm boring, but I used to tell them that Goliath will come up. Find me a man. Who will fight for me? And I knew that will say, I'm the man. I'm the man. Find me a man. Are you not the army of Israel? Meanwhile, his brothers, who are six feet tall, as soon as Goliath came down, come on, man. you want to fight? Come on, come on, hide in the cave. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Day after day after day, praise the Lord. Day after day after day, the Bible says daily, Goliath was tormenting them. As your, as your situation tormented you daily. You wake up every morning thinking it will go away. He says good morning to you. <laughs> Glory be to God. Day after day, day after day. And David represents that type of timing that comes on the inside of you. That you hear something that says, mm -mm, enough is enough. That it makes the baby on the inside of your leap. Just like Hannah one day was saying, was miserable, and her husband was saying, am I not to you? More we don't get. I want to more to you than ten sons who just looked at him. <laughs> Went straight to the temple and prayed and made a vow. Glory be to God. He saw something. He saw God. And he says, ah, man. Then he realized, listen, the battle, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. The battle, because of the God he knows, yes. is not for the strong, nor the race for the swiftest or the fastest, but time and chance. Mm. You know, the irony of that scripture really is, is that those who actually win are those who are the strongest. Yes. That's the irony of the scripture. But the irony of that scripture still remains that those who are very skillful also fail miserably at times. Yes. And those who succeed are the ones who know what to do with the time that they have. But there's one thing that we realize sometimes, time is not always in our control. But, he, but David had an understanding that time is in the control of God. He controls time. He's the one who set the demarcations of when a day will begin and when a day will end. And that's why when David saw Goliath, he said, listen, you come. Oh, Lord have mercy. Every time I read that scripture, I just want to, listen, I want to jump. And he says, you come with sword. You come with spear. You come with this. You come with all your experience. Because I heard that you have been a warrior since the day of your birth. But I come in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. And this day, timing. This day, the Lord will give you into my hands. Amen. And I will get up my his head. Oh Lord, I bless you. Small guy. Even when I was going to have mercy. You know that even when David appeared to the situation, Goliath laughed. And so sometimes when you're trying to take initiative about the situation, people look at you like, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> they laugh at you. You need to know where to take the initiative. Because God places time in your hands for particular reasons. He places time in your hands for sometimes for you to relax. 
and see the salvation of God. And at some time, they said, now is the time for you to just go and get this enemy. Deal with it. He says, this day. And the time you're waiting, when you're taking the initiative, don't allow people with their own experiences to deter you. Because Saul took David and says, come. Show me your resume. You, this guy, before you begin to fight, before you begin to talk, because, you know, I know you're a kid. Show me your resume. I'm a shepherd. Please, this is not time for joking. This is a guy who is 10 feet tall. He has been a warrior since the day of birth. And you're telling me, I'm asking for your resume, and you're telling me you've been a shepherd. And he says, okay, since there's nobody who's going to show up for this fight, at least you're one volunteer. Let me give you my sword. Let me give you. And the Bible says David could not even move in it. That's right. And the problem with us today, we want to walk on somebody else's experience. Mm -hmm. We want to move on somebody else's experience. The experience is only to give you hope. You need to find the way God is taking you. The experience is to tell you, if God has done it for AK, he can do it for me. If God has done it for BDB, he can do it for me. If God has done it for Brittany, he will do it for me. Because the Bible says, that's where it comes to knowing God. He is no respecter of persons. He's never partial. Glory be to God. And so he understands the concept of time. That in terms of God, he says that this day, not tomorrow. Meanwhile, the deliverance of Israel was at hand. The Bible says this situation has been presenting itself day after day. After day, after day, after day, after day. All of a sudden, little David comes up with a bit of swag like me, glory be to God, and says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine who tries to defy the army of Israel? When he says that the army of Israel, he's trying to tell you that I am a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar person. You may terrorize everybody else, but you can't terrorize me this time because I am a child of the living Jesus. And he says, this day, my season has come. Psalms 102 verse 13. Your set time of favor has come. And once you can discern it, it's time for you to take the initiative. Like I always say, while you're waiting for God, God is waiting for you. Glory be to God. So when it comes to the concept of time, know when to take the initiative. Know when to, sit, to stand still. Glory be to God. Know when not to forget. Can I just, can I just, uh, just uh, say this to every one of us? Can I beg you in the name of Jesus? Please do not fill in the gap for God. I don't care how, how rushed the time is. Do not fill in the gap for God because you will miss it. I guarantee you. But why you relax? Why you feel that? What am I going to do? I feel helpless. God, that's when God shows up. One of the problems is we hold, we give God a problem with one hand and we take it back with the other hand. And could you imagine trying to help somebody? You're, you're an expert at acting and you see me struggling. I said, let me help you. I said, no, no, I got it, I got it, I got it. What will you do? Okay, when you're done, let me know. And half of the time, that's what God is doing. And you're done, let me know. Let's rise as we pray.